Let's do an example to show how we're going to be analyzing these uh, RC and RL circuits for their step response. In this case, we'll do a step response. All right, we know then, and we're, we're looking for the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time. So we know that V across the capacitor as a function of time is equal to the final voltage, or V infinity, plus the initial voltage, which is V of 0 plus, minus the final voltage, which is V of infinity, E to the minus T over tau. So having derived this formula, our task now becomes determining what V of infinity is, or the final voltage on this capacitor is, what the initial voltage on it is, and what tau for the circuit is. So let's look at this circuit here. So here's the situation. We have basically two different circuits. We've got the left-hand side of this circuit, which is connected through this switch, and that's the connection for the capacitor or the circuit that the fa capacitor finds itself connected to for T less than zero. And then at T equals zero, the switch is thrown to the other position, where it's now exposed to a different circuit with a minus 15 volt source in it. So we're starting out 10 volts through this divider network here to charge the capacitor. That will give us our initial voltage. Let's start with that. So for T less than zero, and when you're doing these kinds of circuits, analyzing these types of circuits, at least initially it does pay to, um, to redraw the circuit. So for T less than zero, we've got the 10 volt source here. We have a four kilo ohm resistor. Four kilo ohm resistor. We have a, an eight kilo ohm resistor and we have the capacitor. And it's a 20 microfarad capacitor. 10 volts. All right, the assumption is that it's been in this state long enough that the capacitor will have charged up to some voltage that is defined by the circuit around it. And that the current going through here, because the capacitor is acting as an open circuit, there's no current flowing through there, and the current coming from that source will be going through the 4K and the 8K ohm resistor. The current is the same through those two since there's no branching of current. Those two are in series. And so the voltage that this capacitor will charge to will be just the voltage across that 8 kilo ohm resistor, which is going to be, using our voltage divider formula, 10 times 8K. We can drop the Ks because they would cancel. 8K over 4K plus 8K. So that's 8 twelfths of 10. That's 2 thirds of 10. That's equal to 6.67 volts. That's V at 0 minus, which we know is also going to be our V of 0 plus because you can't instantaneously change the voltage on the capacitor. All right, that initial voltage is all we want out of this left hand side of the circuit. We now switch the, or flip the switch to this position, and once again, let's redraw the circuit. This time we have our capacitor. This is for T greater than zero. We have a capacitor. There's a two kilo ohm resistor. We have a 12 kilo ohm resistor, 24 kilo ohm resistor, and then this voltage source. That is minus 15 volts. Now, if you stop and think about it, the idea here, well, first of all, the idea here is that we're going to throw the switch at t equals 0, and we're going to let this circuit run until it finds a new steady state. The new steady state will be when the capacitor is charged up to a voltage that is defined by, that's defined by the rest of the circuit. At that point, there will be no more current flowing through the capacitor. At that point, the capacitor will be open circuit, and the voltage that it charges to will be the voltage that would be seen across here open circuit. That brings to mind Thevenin equivalency. So really, this open circuit voltage, the final voltage that this is going to, will be the Thevenin equivalent voltage of 
this circuit here. Let's just redraw that. We've got the 2K. We've got the 12K. We've got 24K. And minus 15 volts. And we want to determine what is the open circuit voltage there. Now, because it's open circuit, that means that there will be no current going this way. And because there's no current going this way, all the current will again be coming this way. And so once again, the voltage, open circuit voltage, is going to be the voltage across the 12K ohm resistor, which is in series with the 24K. So we can then say our V at infinity is going to be the open circuit voltage, which in this case is going to be minus 15 times 12 over 12 plus 24, or 12 over 36, that sounds like one-third of negative 15, so that voltage then will be one-third of 15 is uh, minus 5 volts. So we've got our final voltage, we have our initial voltage, what's left? To determine tau. Now we know for an RC circuit the tau is equal to R times C. Now, which R is it? Is it the 2K, the 12, the 24K? The answer to that is it's the equivalent resistance. It's the resistance that the capacitor is exposed to. The capacitor doesn't know what the configuration in here is. It simply feels a resistance. So the resistance that it feels is then the equivalent resistance looking back in here, which will be REQ then is equal to the 2K plus. Now, how do we get the equivalent resistance? You short out or deactivate the voltage source, which we do by replacing it with a short. And that brings the 12K and the 24K ohm resistors into parallel. And the parallel combination of those two is in series with the 2K to give us REQ, or 2K plus 12 times 24 over 12 plus 24. And of course, our answer will be in kiloohms. So 12 in parallel with 24 turns out to be um, eight K added to the two K then gives us R E Q is equal to ten kilo ohms. Now we can calculate tau. Tau is equal to then ten times ten to the third times C, which is twenty microfarads or twenty times ten to the minus sixth, and that product then is equal to point two. So We've got the initial voltage, we have the final voltage, and we have tau. We can come back up here and we can write then the voltage across the capacitor is equal to our final voltage, which is minus 5 volts, plus the initial voltage, which is 6.67, minus the final voltage. Now let's be careful here. The final voltage is a negative 5, so it's going to be minus a minus 5, e to the minus t over 0.2. Cleaning that up a little bit, that gives us negative 5, dropping the, the units there, negative 5 plus 11.67 e to the minus t divided by 0.2 volts. Well, I'm running out of room, but let's just see if we can't squeeze the graph of this thing in here. Our initial voltage is 6.67 volts, so it's going to be starting up here. And it's going to be dropping down to a minus 5 volts. So plus 6.67, and it will be going and dropping off something like that. Okay?